A couple of weeks ago, I found myself at the photography and video show in Birmingham in the good old UK of, well, England. And suddenly I was thrust into a vast room full of other photographers. And there was one thing that struck me about the whole affair is that hardly anybody was taking photographs. Strange, don't you think, that you can go to a show that's entirely about photography and videography and uh, no one's taken any photos. Now, of course, I appreciate that people go to photography exhibitions for different reasons. Many will simply go to, say, get a bargain. There's going to be lots of different camera vendors there. Well, actually, there's not lots of different camera vendors, are there? Um, there's hardly any left. I mean, small businesses um, have gone. Um, so we had um, uh, Wex, uh, Camera Centre, uh, Cardiff, um, and, and maybe two others. Um, not, not very many at all. But lots of other, um, how should we put it, manufacturers, you know, Nikon, Olympus, Canon, bloody hell, Canon was massive. And all of these places where you can go and buy a bargain or pick up the latest gear and you know, just all kinds of things. I mean, the, the Nikon stand had a, a big raised platform where you could kind of look over the heads of everybody and with massive lenses, see the color of the snot at somebody on the other side of the hall. However, it seems that hardly anybody goes to a photography show and does photography. Now, it's fair to say that there were some people doing photography. There's lots of cameras strung around necks and such, lots of long lenses. Uh, and in the photography pubcast, they were questioning why people were walking around with long lenses. Well, I'm gonna show you in a little while why some long lenses were actually rather useful. But by and large, what we were seeing people taking photographs of was stands that were selling lighting and they'd set up big studio scenes and employed models and they were all dressed up in yeah really kind of wacky uh, outfits and such and yeah photographers were wandering by and yeah well actually they weren't wandering by this is the problem you know you, you ended up with log jams of photographers uh, around these uh, these kind of studio areas yeah just shooting away and it's, you couldn't push through I mean the, it was yeah it was craziness and of course I appreciate there are different genres of photography but the one genre that I like to work in um, yeah I mean once I called myself a landscape photographer and that, that's not untrue any longer but perhaps I might call myself now uh, more of an observational photographer because what I like shooting and if you've been following the recent uh, videos you will realize that I like shooting things that I notice, and uh, a lot of you seem to think I'm quite good at it. So I was walking around this photography exhibition noticing things, and it was those things that I was shooting. Let me give you an idea of the kind of things that I was noticing. So it's fair to say that experienced photographers have an eye for something. Uh, yeah, you know, it's... It, it's it's intrinsic to a lot of us. A lot of you will say, I don't know how you see these things. And I've got to turn, in, turn around to you and say, I don't know how I do that either. But by the same token, I don't know how I drive. But I do. And I drive quite a lot. And I do it without thinking. I get in the car, I turn the engine on, I reverse out of the spot behind the, the house here. And yeah, I get on the road and I, I don't mow people down. I don't smash into walls and I don't you know, kill people. I don't drive through red lights. I don't know how I do it. Can you explain it? Well, probably. Just one word. Experience. It's, there's a muscle memory to it. and Learning to see is a bit like kind of exercising your muscles. It's the, it's, it's the muscles up here, though. It's not just necessarily these things. It's the muscles up here. It's those things that allow you, those, those cognitive um, uh, thoughts that allow you to notice lines and patterns and shapes and colour contrasts and all kinds of things that lots of people will simply miss. How do you get this, this vision 
And I've got to tell you, I don't, I'm, I don't know. I've been able to do it for a great deal of my life. I've been able to uh, yeah, glance at things and it's like, oh, there's something there. And I can hone this skill for sure. And I think I have honed this skill. But Nikki, who isn't a photographer, well, not in the same way I'm a photographer, I think she's somewhat better at it than I am. She notices these things as well. It's an innate creative kind of response. It's being able to understand how these lines and these textures and these shapes and these lights and these darks and these shadows all kind of work together to produce something that kind of grabs the eye and says, look at me, you're going to look. And it's about being observant. It's, it's, think about it this way. You're familiar, I'm sure, with the phrase, you can hear, but you don't listen. Well, there's the same kind of thing happening with uh, your sight and your observation. You can notice things, but you don't really see them. You know, you're not necessarily in that space to, to, to spot a, uh, a composition or, 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 or something that kind of grabs your attention and for it to literally grab your attention, for it to do something that, uh, that, that really says, no, you're, you're going to stop and look at this and you're going to consider it, even if it's for a moment because, yeah, our, our brains work really rather quickly. Um, well, some of us do. You can see very quickly whether there's something there that just kind of grabs your eye. And often it, it, it's the contrast between one colour and another, not, and often where you've got a really sharp line between those things, a bit like this. If you were to go out tomorrow on your local high street with your camera and uh, say a a small memory card, not you can buy small memory cards anymore, but say, yeah, kind of eight gigabytes or, or sorry, not gigabytes, eight megabytes. Oh, I'll get it. No, I'll get, I was right in the first place, eight gigabytes. It sounded wrong because I had the word eight there, the, well, the number eight. Um, yeah, you, you could probably fill eight gigabytes to be walking around your local high street and noticing things. And this is the, the absolute key to photography success. It doesn't, you're not going to get it overnight, but it's spotting the, the these the, these contrasts, it's spotting these textures and the patterns, and they, they're everywhere, literally they are absolutely everywhere. I can guarantee that, yeah, if you go off down uh, an alley off the high street or something, or go around the back of the shops or something, you're going to find a window frame with peeling paint. It's almost a, a given that it's going to be there somewhere. The peeling paint is in itself a fascinating subject for your photography. But of course, I was at an exhibition centre, there's no peeling paint here, but there's lots of other things uh, around. And it's not just in the main hall, but it's in the, the exhibition centre itself. It's the, the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham, the NEC. It's a huge, absolutely huge complex that has uh, stairs, escalators, travelators. Uh, it's got something called a skywalk that connects one part of it to another. It's an absolute wonderful place to go out with your camera. And despite the fact that I was stopped by a security guard, probably for, well, I was in areas that weren't generally open. I mean, they weren't closed, but they were open, but he was fine um, with it. Uh, but some somewhere between talking to him and getting back to the car, I lost my Osmo pocket, which is why you're seeing a talking head video here interspersed with a few bits of B-roll, uh, which big thank you to uh, Jimmy Cheng for providing that. Um, uh, Jimmy and I met at the at the show. If you're not familiar with Jimmy, uh, he is a professional uh, photographer and he has a YouTube channel and he also does uh, a regular uh, live stream on a Wednesday afternoon. And uh, there's links uh, down below. Jimmy uh, is a great guy and I thank him very, very much for uh, these little bits of B-roll because I haven't got it anymore. It's uh, all on uh, this Osmo pocket, which is possibly now in somebody else's pocket. So uh, if, anyone, uh, if anyone's got a, an Osmo pocket they picked up at the NEC, uh, it's got a memory card and it's got loads of footage on there that looks a bit like me, 
Can I have it back, please? So I urge you to go out with your camera with just one lens is going to be good enough and just walk around a place that is familiar to you and seek out these compositions, these, uh, these visuals that you probably see every day or every week and you don't notice them. And this is the absolute key. It's the things that you don't notice. It's just a case of training these things, or, or rather that, of course, uh, to, to see beyond the, the kind of mundane. And, and let's face it, this is largely what we're talking about here. It's, it's, it's mundane stuff. It's stuff that exists in most cases for the uh, for a purpose, but not necessarily for the aesthetic, but it exists for a purpose. Sometimes it may be kind of made up to improve its aesthetic, but it's it, it's stuff that is designed to be used rather than necessarily designed to be seen and uh, and enjoyed like that. So go and look for these things, such as yeah the the chair in this shot. It's a nice piece of design. There's no two ways about it, but it is at the end of the day, just a chair. But the way it's positioned with the colour and the transition from one colour to another makes it an interesting shot. I'll play you out with um, a, a selection of other images that I got from the, uh, the NEC. Some of these are uh, really rather interesting in that uh, because I'm in spaces in the NEC that are not necessarily uh, open, or rather, as I said, that, that they're not closed, but that then they're, they're not holding exhibitions in these particular points at the time I was there, then the spaces themselves, which are effectively designed to uh, carry a lot of people, are largely deserted. And I do like the idea of being in these places that are designed for the transit of people. It, it's, it's to get people from one place to another place uh, with yeah as great ease as possible uh, and functionality. Yeah, it's these empty corridors. It's these interesting halls and shapes and like, and they're, they're wonderful. Uh, other places to go and do this: underground stations, railway stations, um, uh, shopping malls uh, after uh, after the shops have closed. Yeah, big spaces, or not even necessarily large spaces, but spaces that have got some depth that allow you to um, get into them where um, when when they're largely empty. Empty spaces are stunningly photographic. Enjoy the, the shots coming out. In a few weeks time I will be doing another video. Hopefully I'll have a, a, a new camera by then. But anyway what I'll be doing is I'll be going out into uh, the kind of spaces that exist all around us, uh, anyone that lives anywhere near a town will have access to some of the places that I'm going to be going to and I'm going to be taking photographs uh, of everyday things that you can go and take photographs of and create some amazing artwork with. Tune in in a couple of weeks time when I'm, uh, when I'm doing that. Not sure exactly when it's going to be but it's a plan and uh, it will happen. In the meantime, if you would like to support me, please consider joining the channel for, I think it's four ninety nine a month. You'll get at least one extra video a week. I'm not managing to do more than that at the moment. Um, to be honest with you, it's a little challenging, but you know, there's an extra bit uh, in the week and by supporting me, I can continue making these videos and yeah, uh, it, it, it all helps. Uh, it all helps a great deal. And, uh, and all of the videos in the, uh, the membership section aren't carrying adverts either. So, uh, so yeah, that's got to be a bonus, hasn't it? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the uh, shots that we're going to run out with and uh, yeah, tune in another time. <laughs>
forget to click the like button.